respected uh, speakers and panelists, our faculty colleagues, invited guests from industry and from other institutions and dear participants, I once again extend a very hearty welcome to each and every one of you to the third, third phase of this SPJMR Business Academia Conclave, the IM Conclave. And they have come up with the subjects SMAC Smack, Social Media, Mobility, Analytics, and Cloud Computing. But these buzzwords are not new. We are hearing this at least uh, maybe five, eight years. In different forms they come, different avatars they come. Now they have come with a new avatar by claiming that all these items coming together in a, in a single platform, each one contributing to the other. And in such a way that together this platform of SMAC can give a value unmatchable and contribute exp exponentially to the value in business. So the whole thing, common man to war, everywhere is going to be influenced by information technology and the way it is progressing is at a high goat speed that people are looking what is going to happen. I am very sure with a large number of experts here, we are going to have very exciting time here to understand more about high IT and especially the Yes, some may see he is going to change us. I wish a grand success to this program. Thank you. Welcome to the SPGIMR Business Academia Information Management Conclave 2014. The theme for this concla conclave is Transforming Business the SMAC Way. SMAC is the acronym for Social, Mobile, Analytics and Cloud Technologies. The digital world is upon us. Transforming, reinventing, innovating, recreating business paradigms, business models, and business processes in a truly unprecedented way. Truly, we are on the cusp of the new digital economy revolution. CEOs are finding themselves increasingly ill-equipped at managing uncertainty, complexity, and change. Much of this is driven by the external factors impacting organizations. Technology is the number one factor which is affecting business, even more than the economy. The SMAC platform will transform not only business models and processes, but will also support different values, values of collaboration, of communication, creativity, flexibility, openness, transparency, innovation, and opportunism, vital for survival and growth in the new digital economy. So all of you take note. I don't wish to steal the thunder anymore from my distinguished speakers, so I'll sign off and say thank you and wish you all the best. After the opening remarks, the conclave began with five esteemed speakers sharing their views on SMAC, which is an acronym for social media, mobility, analytics and cloud computing. The first speaker of the day was Ganesh Natrajan of Zensar Technologies, who spoke on the importance of core business systems along with the adoption of SMAC. This whole area of SMAC is very important and most companies which have implemented what we call systems of record will move into the new era of systems of engagement. But I also introduced the note of caution that it is, we have to go beyond the hype. We should not get so carried away that we forget that core systems are, are as important as investing in new technologies. Amit Sirkar of Microsoft Services Global Delivery was the next speaker who spoke about the four mega trends which come together and form SMAC. He also spoke about the importance of the four technologies both individually as well as combined together. What we are seeing today is really a confluence of four mega trends or as people call it nexus of forces. It's, it's SMAC, it's social, mobile, analytics and cloud. What's interesting is that each of these by themselves is powerful enough to cause transformation. But what's happening today is they're happening at the same time. They're interconnected. And very interestingly, it has the individual in the center of all of the transformation. So the mega trends by themselves are powerful. When they get connected, when you have a confluence, there is an explosion of opportunity. 
Today, digital technology is an important aspect for any business, and this is what Pankaj Vaish of Accenture covered in his speech. He also highlighted the seven trends of new business and the need of adoption of new technology in the present times. The primary point from our perspective at Accenture is that every business is a digital business. Digital technologies have evolved to become much more relevant and pervasive. And for any company, regardless of the business, but to be successful, it must learn to adapt and embed these into its business. The next speaker, Pradeep Mukherjee of Avasant, talked about the various technological innovations which have happened over the years, which have changed the way people do business today. Over the last uh, two decades, if you see, business has undergone a significant transformation because of technological innovation. Uh, initially, it was the advent of computers, clients of a computing, which saw a definite change in how people do business. Thereafter, in the late 90s, early 2000, it was the internet, which brought in a revolution in the way we had do business. And now we are seeing that uh, SMAC, which is an acronym for uh, social media, mobility, uh, analytics and cloud, it's changing the way we do business, we're going to do business and the way we are going to interact with consumers and clients. So it's, it's, we, are, we are at, I would say, an inflection point of business transformation which is driven by this new technology platform. The final speaker of the conclave was Nishal Khurana of Frost & Sullivan who detailed the importance of building innovative business model around smack technology. I think it's a given fact that the businesses are getting completely transformed by the whole SMAC technologies coming in place. But having said that, I don't believe we can really converge SMAC into a single word, right? We've been usually, loosely using this SMAC as a word, but social media, uh, cloud technologies, analytics, or be it mobility, right? Each has a very significantly different role to play in the whole technology system. So one is, of course, the need, right? So you're needing social media to probably look at the way customer insights are, or you need social media for better collaboration. You have mobility, which is radically transforming the way business is done. You have analytics to really give you incisive data from the unlocking the data value that you have sitting in your systems. And cloud, which has made probably applications available to enterprises who, who could not really look in a CapEx-oriented model. The session concluded with an interactive Q&A session where the audience and the speakers deliberated on various topics related to SMAC and its use in current business practices. Uh, the theme of today for today's panel discussion obviously is transforming business the smack way. My first question is to Ashwin. You have been closely involved in business transformation using smack portfolio of products and services. What are the challenges and benefits that you achieved? So for me fundamentally what the biggest benefit uh, smack technology has brought in is it's all pervasive and it really creates a very strong response uh, or can you can create a strong response and the velocity of response. And that also creates the challenge. So as a business, if you're not tracking these uh, responses, then your competition will track it and they will be faster to respond to this product. Today with SMAC, uh, it's far more sophisticated implementation. The tools are complex. The integration challenge is many folds. And we have so many customers who have failed because they didn't envisage the integration of the SMAC platform. Uh, and that's, that's what I would say. SMAC is impactful. First is if you know the right business case, it helps you in responding a very rapid business velocity. But at the same time, if you don't understand how to implement it and don't have a right business case, you know, it could be a, a big negative impact. Sudipto, you're the expert in BI. How does an organization leverage social, mobile, and cloud technologies to integrate with analytics? The fundamental shift from an analytics perspective is that uh, whilst the pre-transaction analytics was always part of life, 
the smack or the social mobile and cloud is now enabling organizations to do analytics post the transaction now you'll ask me a very fundamental question why is it that it is necessary right now uh, from a very conceptual perspective <clears throat> Uh, a buyer or a consumer is buying something in order to get a value because he's paying for it and he's getting a value right so for example if I go to, I'll take the same example I'll go to a bookstore and I buy a book why I'm buying a book and paying 200 or 300 rupees is because I'm getting some value right but if the seller of the book also tells me that one of your goals is to gain more knowledge in this specific area and hence can you would you want to look at five more books or if the seller of the book is also going to tell me that amongst your peer group these are the new items or new titles which people are reading would you want to look at that then the seller is actually helping me in achieving my goals my goal is not to buy a book my goal is something else now with the ability of social mobile it is now possible in for you for as a seller to unlock that value which was earlier not there and that's where analytics comes in and why would you want to unlock that value because it can give you more value as a business because if you are able to get that relationship with the individual customer then you can do even more business more profitable business with the same customer which earlier was not possible so integration between SMAC and A is anyways one of the letters in the acronym so integration between SMC and A is nothing but unlocking the value from a post consumption perspective in order to address the goals of your customers that's one of the ways right so social and mobile combined with cloud actually creates the business case both from a benefit as well as from a cost perspective in order to adopt analytics in an organization that's how i see a within the acronym working with smnc colin organizations normally implement social mobile analytics and cloud solutions in silos <clears throat> is there a multiplier effect if these technologies are actually implemented in an internet in integrated architecture what is your experience the very simple short answer to that uh, first part of the question is of course yes uh, integrated implementations are always much more beneficial they bring much more uh, value to the company but then I think uh, the bigger question for you is uh, tell us something about it what's our experience uh, if you're looking at business a business is going to run an ERP at the background right we already automated a lot of processes but the fact is that there are a lot of chinks in between right none of the processes are completely and totally automated from end to end so you have ERPs or other kind of you know maybe a banking system a core banking uh, platform which are performing these business processes but in between there's a lot of gaps right and that's where we see SPAC coming in in an organization itself to fill in a whole lot of things which we were doing previously with all kinds of ineffective, inefficient tools. Just add a couple of points to you know what uh, Colin has said. I think the first thing we got to realize that the big game changer today is that we live in a connected world. So you have high computing power at your fingertips anywhere you are in the world and this is the game changer. So because this game changer is there, businesses are looking at how can I potentially come with disruptive business models to meet the changes in consumer expectations. Initially, we saw the change in products which were digital, which were books, which were buying and selling online, etc. But today, we are now seeing basically these concepts attacking the traditional industry, which is manufacturing, etc. And that's the big change for most of you who are actually going to go out there. So for example, I'll give you an exact other example. If you take companies which make pacemakers, right? what is there to digitize and what is SMAX in a pacemaker, right? 
the idea here is then can I be preventive? Can I inform you if your pacemaker is not working well? And therefore, can I connect the pacemaker into a network and health monitor the pacemaker, health monitor your vital signs? So this simple concept of embedding a sensor into a pacemaker, into your body, is what is driving a disruptive business model for those traditional manufacturing companies in the healthcare. And that's a fundamental change that is sweeping the entire business world. And for people like me who are in security, my job is to say, how can I stop that pacemaker working and kill that person when he's using this communication? But that's how we test it, right? So if that is possible, then it becomes a weapon in somebody's hands, and therefore you need to think security when you're actually implementing this disruptive business model, right? And this weakness ex still exists today in, in pacemakers which are out there, which are connected, right? So this is the fundamental sort of shift in thinking that is required. But Oscar, just uh, uh, one more word on that. If you see, uh, most of the speakers here, as well as in the sessions in the past, you know, they're constantly giving examples that this is how SMAC is being used, right? And that's the whole thing. That is, what are the business use cases that can come up? It's a whole new technologies which have come up and enabled a whole lot of new possibilities, right? And that opens up a whole lot of possibilities for entrepreneurs. Right? And I hope there are many of you here who are sitting here who will go out, entrepreneurs, who will bring an integration of all these kind of technologies in a business process which will make sense to someone, bring about a business outcome and you make a lot of money in the process. Amitav, you've been working extensively on cloud solutions. Uh, tell us something about the challenges that you faced and benefits achieved while deploying them in India. The adoption of cloud in India is relatively slower compared to global. But the basic advantage which we uh, used to have from a cloud perspective has already arrived. You know, in the initial stages of cloud adoption, the large focus was around cost saving. So the core advantages of cloud from a cost saving perspective is no longer the driver for cloud adoption anymore. What we are seeing right now is cloud being an integral part of what Shudipto and other panelists mentioned of the overall smack stack. This is disrupting the business. So the future adoption of cloud or the next wave of adoption of cloud is driven by the disruption of the business with a clear outcome on significant enhancement on the business uh, outcome, if, if I put it that way. And one of the significant effect which is happening in the market, be, you know, along with all this uh, smack stack is an enhancement of end user experience. So the broad idea is cloud is, an, is a very important element, a very important technology to make all these things happen. It is no longer about cost saving. It is no longer about, you know, converting from CapEx to OpEx. Those are history now. It's all about what's the new business model I can come out with leveraging all this smart technology. So that's what. Mandar, you have been extremely successful in implementing and deploying private clouds. Right now, a lot of IT is uh, traditional hosted systems or uh, in the data centers of customers, right? So, and cloud is still cloudy for a lot of customers. The first thing typically that uh, customers need to identify is what is the right solution for them, right? And there is no one size fits all. Uh, so it's a consultative process. Uh, typically, there are three filters that customers have to keep in mind, right? Uh, economic filter, trust filter, and functional filter. Uh, you take any uh, new channel for that matter, right? When they are, uh, or any e-commerce company, right? They have certain, uh, they don't have predicted cycle like manufacturing or banks. They don't go through uh, repeated cycles. Their demand is a little bit unpredictable, right? If there is a news uh, which is breaking or if there are any seasons, Christmas, New Year, suddenly they see a lot of rush. Now those are ready candidates to move on to cloud. Why? Because you can then leverage on the scalability of cloud. Right? Uh, we had success with some of the, uh, some of the TV shows for that one, like Satya Meo Jayate. Right? You host that onto cloud because you see only cyclic demand. You see demand when the show is getting aired, when people just want to go on their feedback. So those are the times when people suddenly see a lot of load. 
Now those are again ready candidates to go on cloud because you don't know what is the demand, you don't know when and how long the demand will last. Unpredictive workload is the second candidate that we have seen people adopting cloud in a big way. But then uh, typically it's a slow journey right now as you rightly said in India. We are, we are seeing people definitely are interested in going on cloud. But lot of investment that they have already made and some of the CEOs we still see uh, are little possessive about their data centers. But then that's something which is changing mostly to, through hybrid cloud and gradual cloud adoption. Vijay, you worked in the field of decision sciences and uh, how, will, how will decision sciences, particularly analytics, power the next economic engine? And if you look at uh, uh, historically, historically uh, there are uh, two different ways in which uh, um, solutions were offered and, and, and drivers of growth were achieved. One is uh, in terms of solving high impact business problems for, for a whole lot of customers okay and solving them repeatably for multiple customers okay so when you do uh, high impact problems in a multiple for multiple customers in a repeated manner you generate disproportionate returns okay for your for yourself for your customers for your investors and all those kind of things so that's what we call as uh, the fertile land of disproportionate, disproportionate returns okay and on the other side, if there are one-off problems which, don't, which are not really uh, impactful and it, it cannot be repeated multiple times, this is, this is the, the, the barren desert of monetization, right? I mean, you don't, you're not able to get monetization out of it, but you still have to do this and, and continue doing that. There are problems in that space. But if you look at our philosophy is today, there are there are not many problems which are going to give you disproportionate returns and because they are, they are not going to be too many high impactful problems which are at great frequency such that, that you would get the returns which you want to. So if you look at it, tomorrow's business world, at least actually it has already happened, you are going to actually be confronted with a large number of problems in the ROR space. And, and for companies to actually be able to succeed and derive growth, they need to focus on the ROR and not the silver bullet in, in, in the first land of disproportionate returns. And that's what we believe decision sciences actually plays a very important role. Because for you to make returns out of the ROR space, you need to take more decisions. Yeah, Lucius, you're the security specialist. This tidal wave of data from mobiles, <coughs> social, analytics, cloud, you know, hitting a company must be creating a social uh, security nightmare for you. How do you propose to mitigate all these risks? Companies take different measures to protect these risks. Uh, one is basically investment in security technology. The other is, you know, uh, security awareness to various uh, people. Uh, the whole idea is to make security an enabler because ultimately SMAX has a lot of business promise and everybody would like cloud to grow and to use mobile, etc. But we have to think security and build it into whatever digital business process that we actually roll out. So thank you. <laughs>